And for more on the report and investment in Africa, I sat down with James Newlands, Ernst & Young's America's Africa Business Center leader. And I asked him which countries in Africa are attracting the most foreign direct investment. South Africa continues to be the, the attract the most FDI. About 16, 17 percent of all new projects in 2015 went into South Africa. Um, other countries, and, and we saw an increase between 2014 and 2015 as well. But that was a trend across most of the major economies: Nigeria, um, Ghana, Egypt, Morocco. Many of these major economies, we saw an, an uplift in number of projects. But I think the big news is Kenya. Kenya has moved from way down the rankings to number two behind South Africa. If South Africa took about 17% of the project numbers, Kenya's over 12% Well, why, this why year. are we seeing that? I think it has to do with, you know, Kenya has been less affected by the commodities uh, prices because it's less commodity dependent. I think the diversification of the Kenyan economy is important, relative stability, but also I think the integration in the East African community is helping uh, making, making East Africa and Kenya as a hub particularly attractive. Well, the USA, the single largest investor in Africa for the second year in a row. Right. Who are the other countries that are pouring money into the continent? Okay, so, so we've seen the, the UK lift up significantly compared to 2014, so that's the, the second largest. UK is the biggest in terms of both, uh, in terms of projects, capital, and jobs created. So that's quite, a, quite an achievement. UK, as I, as I mentioned, has come through strongly, but all the, all the other typical ones, France we see as, as a major, number, th number, number three, UAE, an important investor, growing uh, in its investment in terms of projects, and India moving up the rankings significantly in the last year. Well, what about Chinese foreign direct investment? Because with the growth slowdown in China and the commodity slump, what impact has that had? So uh, China is still in the top 10 in terms of investors. It's it, about four or five percent of the projects in in. 2015 were Chinese uh, projects. What is interesting, in t although it was only four or five percent of the number of projects, the, the jobs created through those projects, the Chinese investments, were probably or very close to on a par with US and, and French uh, job creation. You mentioned the UK and France as being big FDI investors, former colonial powers in Africa. No coincidence there? Are there still heritage links to the countries that they're investing in? Very much so. You know, French investors tend to favor Francophone Africa, Morocco, those, those sort of countries. We've seen a lot of investment from there. Uh, UK, typically, we see a lot of investment into South Africa, East Africa, and of course, uh, parts of West Africa. And what sectors are attracting the most foreign direct investment? I think that, that that's the really interesting story as well, is that if you go back uh, yes, I, I think there's a perception that uh, many people have that the, the extractive sectors are the ones that attract the most investment. If we look at the project numbers in 2015, about 45% of the projects were in, in the uh, TMT, technology, media, uh, telecommunications sector, consumer products, financial services, and less than 6% in the extractive industry. So that's a really in interesting story. There is an emerging middle class in Africa, but at the same time, uh, the continent is facing some serious headwinds from the commodity slump. Uh, oil in Nigeria, for example, to rampant corruption at the highest levels in South Africa. So how can we generalize the outlook for the continent as a whole? We can't, and I think that's the, that's the positive that we have in Africa. It's 54 countries, it's a very diverse continent, and when we've spoken about the diversity of the sectors attracting investment, the diversity of the countries attracting the investment, and the diversity of countries that are investing in Africa, which gives us confidence going forward that this is a robust story. Investment is not, if we look at, at the views of these investors, uh, they, are, they are taking a long-term view and they are from a multiple sources and going to multiple destinations. But overall, your outlook for the continent is positive. The IMF revising its growth forecast. Why are you optimistic? I, th I think if we look at the head, you know, they've certainly revised their, their forecasts down. But ag again, if you look at those forecasts, the, it's, it's still forecast to be the second fastest, well, sub-Saharan Africa is still forecast to be the second fastest growing region in the world for the foreseeable future. I think that's that's... It's still a positive story there. Slow growth is, is, is still not no growth, and, and it's relative to the rest of the world a, a, a much better story. But I think the investment that we're seeing coming in, the, the robustness of the foreign direct investment, the long-term nature of that investment gives us confidence. And what is the biggest challenge to investing in Africa? The biggest challenge, 
I think that investors face are, is, is um, seeing it at one place. It, it's, it's having a nuanced understanding, having a data-driven approach, and I guess what we're trying to do with these kind of reports is to provide data to, to enable that decision-making. Well, in your report, you had the Africa Attractiveness Index, and South Africa still top of that list. Uh, why? The RAND is tanking, commodity slump, the president's being charged again with corruption. Why are you so optimistic on South Africa? And you know, you, you, you see in, in the results here that it still attracts the biggest number of, of projects in terms of investment. And it, again, the investment we're looking at is foreign direct investment is not the portfolio flows or equity flows. The, what, we, what we look at here is, is greenfield and brownfield new projects that create jobs. And I think South Africa still is a very attractive market for long-term investors. Uh, the sophistication of the market, the infrastructure, makes a lot of foreign investors, they still see it as a comfortable place to, to perhaps use as a launch pad for the rest of Africa. Uh, so there's, there's a long-term view being taken here. These are the investors we're talking to. We could argue that the infrastructure not so great with those constant power outages, but I suppose in relation to the rest of the continent. What's also very interesting is that you had Egypt at number three with all the political turmoil over there. That, that's been interesting because Egypt has always been a big, so, a big destination for foreign direct investment and we saw that really fall off around the you know, post-Arab spring period. But particularly last year we saw it coming back very strongly. Uh, North Africa generally attracting a lot more investment. Continued strong performance this year, not quite as strong as last year. I think last year was probably pent up uh, money looking to flow there but Egypt remains a, an important uh, uh, destination.